I have no clue how long this update has been live on the Kopi Wiki page, but the community either completely missed it or doesn't realize how majorly impactful and vital this information is to the future of the Cornucopius in-game economy. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Lakeham Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. I hope that you all loaded up on Kopi and land assets to your satisfaction because this weekend we have NFT LV, which is Cornucopia's biggest event of the year. We have early access testing rolling out to mythic land holders, and now we have this information breaking. Well, technically, I think this information has actually been available for at least a month now by the time you're watching this video, but I'm betting that very few people have discovered it. It makes sense that a lot of people miss this because a lot of the OGs are preoccupied with early access of the early cornucopius builds that we have access to right now. A lot of the mythic holders and soon legendary holders are gearing up for their shot at early access to this game, and the rest of you have lives. I obviously don't, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. And if that is not worth a like, then my life is basically meaningless if it's not validated by the random button pushing of strangers around the world. So thank you for your support. What I perceive to be the core business model of the in-game sharing economy of Cornucopius has been revealed, and uh, surprisingly, it's not at all what I expected. There are still plenty of details that have yet to be released, but what was revealed is the macro framework of it all, and it is bigger, more innovative, and translates between digital world and real world so much better than I ever would have guessed that it would. The whole build and earn economy is driven by the future NFT sales of in-game assets, but instead of that revenue going straight towards the development team like it normally would with a traditional game, it is being shared with contributors to the in-game economy. Let me explain. On the production side of the game, players can discover or earn blueprints, which are basically formulas of what it takes in terms of raw materials in order to produce a structure, like a building. These building and structures will oftentimes have important in-game utility, or they can also sometimes just be decorative. If I'm understanding it correctly, blueprints will mainly be for larger in-game assets like those buildings and things like that, so those will be the in-game assets that can be minted into NFTs. And here's where things start to get interesting. There will be district community build and earn challenges every season in which players can collectively contribute to a larger blueprint that presumably no individual player would be able to accomplish on their own. The way that I'm understanding this is that it's kind of like a production-based raid boss, except instead of everybody collectively causing damage to a large raid boss, everybody is collecting raw resources and contributing to the objective blueprint layout and the raw materials that are laid out there. But that's, that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is that these district community build and earn challenges are going to be the mechanism that produces these in-game buildings that can be sold as NFTs. Since this is a collective contribution in order to produce an end product, there's no one individual that's going to have control over this NFT and go and sell it on a secondary market. No, this is all going to be handled by some kind of smart contract interaction that will automatically distribute to all of the contributing players. 
So now the question is, why would anybody buy this stuff? Because if nobody buys anything, there's no revenue that's generated, nobody earns anything, and there's zero motivation to participate in these challenges. There are three primary reasons that I think that people will buy these in-game assets, both in ways that follows patterns of the traditional gaming industry and new ways that are created by blockchain. First of all, consumers in 2023 have spent an additional $47.5 billion with a B on in-game assets. And 2023 isn't even over yet, which is kind of nuts if you think about it, over 22% of the $217.1 billion gaming industry is coming from people that are buying additional in-game content to enhance their in-game experience. There is a market for this, and that's kind of nuts to think about because that $47 billion is just gone, like you have nothing to show for it. That's why my second reason why there is an appeal here is because people will actually be getting something for their time that they can go and resell after they're done with it. This is an absolute massive improvement upon the traditional gaming industry because how it works nowadays is that you're gonna be left with absolutely nothing spending that money or you're just gonna get straight ripped off by trade and deals at GameStop. Cornucopius is one of those games that's gonna be modeled around the idea that blockchain doesn't even need to be a part of the question. So players will be able to come into this game and they're not even going to know that they're dealing with NFTs and they'll completely have the option to actually interact with the blockchain side of things at all. So I think that there's going to be a pretty easily recognizable appeal here. Reason number three is scarcity. And on this point, you kind of have to read between the lines when you're reading this page of the document, but anything that requires any amount of effort is going to produce a sense of scarcity because there will always be those that are not willing to put in that effort, and that's always advantageous for those that are. Let's take a closer look here and get specific because the examples that this page of the Kopi Wiki says about community builds reveals two important things. When the examples identify refineries and distilleries, that implies that these structures, these builds, are going to have some kind of in-game utility attached to them so that players can take them and do something with it in-game, and that's going to drive a demand for it and therefore scarcity. These utilities could very easily be just for personal use. Maybe somebody wants to get into the business of creating jet fuel so that they can run their own in-game esports team without ever having to actually purchase fuel. But what I think is going to be a little bit more likely is that people are going to see these buildings as opportunities because the scarcity of these buildings is going to mean the scarcity of the resources in game that those buildings produce. So people are going to want to pick up these buildings so that they can be one of the few producers of fuel and people will have to come and purchase it from them in order to get access to it. Now, the third point here doesn't actually identify a specific building type. It just says other limited supply of buildings. This definitely raises some questions about the meaning of the words limited supply. Are these buildings gonna be limited by the community build events as the only way to produce them? Or are people going to be able to build them on their own despite the sheer mass of raw materials that it's going to take to build them. I am hoping for the latter, because the game is just not going to be fun if gasoline or fuel resources are going to be so scarce that it's just so incredibly expensive to be able to participate in any races at all. I think that there's going to be some really interesting fine-tuning that is going to have to happen here in order to adjust in such a way that doesn't restrict or choke any individual industry. But I'm really interested here, and I think that the perceived scarcity at the very least is going to be very good 
for the in-game economy that's being built here. There is another bit of interesting information in here that will contribute to the scarcity of these in-game assets, and that is the potential of these NFTs or in-game assets to have a rarity. With the way that it is worded, I expect it to operate on some kind of a loot box model where players will purchase one individual asset and then they will be returned a random rarity somewhere between common and mythic that will likely have differences in cosmetic looks and probably some minor difference in functional utility. Simply because of this design and the introduction of rarity into the question, I fully expect NFT degens to be participating in these mints. You know, this might very well be the only time you'll ever hear me say this, but I'm actually glad that there will likely be speculators that are participating in these mints and likely paper handing the assets out on the secondary markets for under the minted price because it means that people will be able to get access to these in-game assets at a cheaper cost than what they can be minted for. All of this to say, I think that there's some potential here for a relatively substantial and sustainable growing economy in the in-game universe of Cornucopias. All of this changes so many of my preconceived notions of the in-game economy of Cornucopias. As one of the leaders of one of the biggest guilds in the Cornucopias community, I was pretty vocal internally about making sure that we have our land separated from that of the mafias. I mean, don't get me wrong there, that's not motivated by any distrust or anything. The knights and the mafia are very good friends with one another. As somebody that cares about the future sustainability and progress of this game as a top priority, I just wanted to make sure to avoid any monopolizing impact that might put too much power in the hands of smaller entities, even if it is two entities that have their first priority as the in-game experience of all of the players of Cornucopias. However, it looks to me like this design, the way that it's all built, actually encourages collaboration and enforces every individual's contribution, which kind of protects against monopolies. So I might be rethinking some things in that area. This also all kind of slightly changes what I think are going to be the most profitable businesses in Cornucopias. In my head, I thought that it was always going to be about whoever is able to create the most advanced product that the game has to offer, maybe some kind of advanced armor or something, or I've always thought that the hotel industry was always going to be pretty solid. Now that I've read this page of the Kopi Wiki, I definitely think that the hotel business is going to be one of the most profitable, but it's not going to be, like I thought before, based on maybe proximity to resources or some kind of scenic location. I realized that the most in-demand hotel businesses are going to be the ones that are placed in the guild-owned land because people are going to want citizenship in the districts where the biggest community builds, the orders are being filled, where district competitions are being won, and where the best quests are being offered. The only way that you're going to be guaranteed to be able to take advantage of that opportunity is if you join a guild. Whatever guild you choose is completely up to you. I obviously have some bias towards the knights, and you might very well get the opportunity to work with me if you care about that kind of thing. One way or the other, human collaboration has always been the best vehicle for progress. That is the name of the game here, and you can either get on board or you can try and go and do your own thing. I wish you luck, but I can guarantee you that it is going to be more fun with a community. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.